Well, good morning. Our uh, series of lessons on the life of Christ takes us to biblical stories that give us an opportunity to look into the personality as, long, uh, as well as uh, the miraculous aspect of the, of the Son of God. When the Bible indicates that Jesus came to earth and was like us in every way except for sin, there is a tendency in our regard to say, well, he wouldn't like us in every way. I mean, I, I, I certainly can't imagine Jesus doing some of the things we do or being interested in the kinds of things that, that we are. And yet we have a great example that is found in the Gospel of John. Very, very early on in the ministry of Christ, something happens that proves to be the very first miracle of Jesus upon this earth is found in John chapter 2 and I'd like you to read along with me verses 1 through 12. That's John 2, 1 through 12. On the third day a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. I don't know that Jesus, I don't know that this was like, kind of like a, a bring your own bottle event. Was Jesus there supposed to bring wine for everybody? Or could Mary have some insight into her son? That maybe there was the possibility that the very son of God was beginning to get through her mind. The implication of that might mean that maybe you have a way of fixing this, miraculously even. Um, the, the question that we have here often is, what kind of person was Jesus? What kind of person was Jesus with the people around him? Was he kind of this antisocial loner that would disappear for uh, hours uh, and, and, and would return and sit stoically up against a tree by himself? Or was he different than that? Was he different than that? Was, did Jesus ever smile? Did Jesus ever laugh? Did Jesus ever pat anybody on the back? Did Jesus ever give anybody a, a hug? Or was he way too far above being like that? Maybe Jesus was what we see in some of these spoiled celebrities that complain about their fans trying to get close to them. Ask for their privacy from the very people who support them and made them who they are. What kind of person, what kind of social aptitude did Jesus have? Well, I think this is a great time for us to introduce the real Jesus to the world so early on in his ministry. The miracle itself was the turning of water into wine. The background for this is that wine was a part of every wedding. Now, much has been said that, well, the wine then is different than the wine now, uh, that it was a watered-down kind of grape juice, act actually, but there's no evidence in Scripture to indicate that that is the case. Or else, why do we have so many prohibitions about getting drunk from wine? The idea of, uh, of the sin of being a drunkard uh, would be to abuse the alcoholic content of, of wine, and it did have alcohol. If, if I'm correct, when you squeeze a grape, the juice that comes out of it either becomes vinegar or it becomes wine. Um, Jesus is, is asked to do this miracle, and I'm not sure that if Jesus had choreographed this moment, 
that his first miracle here on earth would be something so pedestrian as to make uh, wine from water. And yet that is this circumstance he found himself in. You see, Jesus had been invited to this wedding along with his disciples. They were all there, uh, not as a speaker, not as a healer. Um, there is no sermon. Um, there is no condemnation. Jesus doesn't stand up and proclaim a damnation upon somebody because of their indiscretions. Uh, none of those things happen. Jesus was a guest, and he acted like a guest. And he was respectful, but I believe that Jesus pretty much blended in to the background along with his mother and his disciples, uh, not isolated and not, not trying uh, to be aloof, but rather Jesus was one of the guests at this celebration. And the call was, and the problem was, that we run out of wine. Uh, now this was a faux pas on the part of the, of the organizers of this wedding. I mean, you just never do that. Uh, wine was uh, something that was a part and parcel of celebrations when it came to being a Jew. In Isaiah chapter 25 and verse 6, notice the position that wine has. On this Monday, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. So our connotation here in the 21st century is very much different than what occurred back into this time. And if there was a missing gleam in the eye of Jesus, because this was his first miracle, we have no indication that that's the case at all. Now, the miracle worked, and many sermons have been preached about how water could turn into wine and what kind of water it was. I mean, it was wash water. It was wash water. It wasn't uh, coming from a clear creek somewhere. It is water that had been used to wash. Uh, silverware, plates, hands, faces, feet. We're not sure, but that's how, is it, how it is described. And the amount of water that has been used seems to indicate that that was a lot of wine for a group that had already drank all the wine that was there. Now you can walk away with it, whatever judgment you want, but clearly the miracle of Jesus was sufficient to the task and, uh, and would identify him as being somebody very, very special in the eyes of, uh, of God. Now, there is dual purposes to this miracle as we read about it in John. Um, Number one, I think, the, I think the miracle was given to be a blessing. Just the sensitivity to G, that Jesus had for the mistaken etiquette that had been made by the one who was providing the refreshments for this wedding. I think Jesus felt sorry for her. And because Jesus could, he involved himself in perhaps taking the pressure off of her. I don't think the point was so that everybody could have more wine as much as it was to have a compassionate care that she could be able to save face if Jesus was to intercede. And number two, I think that this miracle was to be a sign primarily to his mother and to his disciples. It's the first introduction of much more that will come down the road. It is the first glimpse behind the curtain of who Jesus really is and what Jesus can truly do. Jesus exemplified how to bless others, and he did it through relating to the needs of the people around him. I think he enjoyed the wedding. I think he enjoyed and laughed and, and, and had admiration for the family and for the, 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 the blessed couple. I think all of those things were happening here. Uh, th there are ways that we can be a part of such a celebration. And, and sometimes it causes us uh, to not put our needs first. I think we need to be relaxed in the, in the company of 
other people, even if they're people we don't know very intimate. Uh, Jesus portrayed, and I think we should try as well, to be comfortable with the people that are around us. And I don't mean pretending. I mean truly to be interested in what's going on in their lives. Wanting to hear their story is much more interesting to me than for somebody who wanted me to relate my story. I, I'm very much more interested in what's going on in other people's lives. It takes a lot of energy to pretend to care. And so I think Jesus truly did care. Uh, socializing is an energizing and satisfying kind of experience. Being uptight and uncomfortable is draining. Is draining to allow yourself to be a part of what is going on around you and the willingness to accommodate others, even within boundaries. And th this is what I mean by that. If you're in a group of people, and you're enjoying a meal together, this is probably not the time to talk about your allergies. Uh, don't take the chance that somebody that has gone out of their way to provide uh, a part of this meal that we're all to enjoy, I, don't, I, I think you can quietly pass something over if you don't like it or if it makes you ill. I don't think that this is a time to let everybody in on all of your dietary idiosyncrasies. I think be gracious. Be thankful. Um, we need to have the willingness to accommodate people around us. And then we want to contribute to that event by bringing food, by helping out with seating, by... by uh, being a part of a conversation when, when perhaps there are people who may be drawn out by your willingness to share. And then, and then finally, Jesus had the consideration to help this host save face. Gave them a, a, a chance to walk away from this uh, wonderful event unscathed. And to the degree that we can do the same thing. We advocate for our own. We prop up those who are, are falling. The idea of coming to an event, you being the event planner of a wedding, and for the caterers to never show up, or for the flowers to never show up, or maybe the preacher didn't uh, remember what was going on. All of those could be opportunities for, in such a, a rigorous ceremony as a wedding, uh, a, a real chance for you to feel blamed and depressed if everything doesn't work out perfect. The things don't have to work out perfect. And particularly, we don't need to add fuel to the fire of somebody else's having lost face. All right, all right. Just one day in the life of Christ. But it tells us a lot about who he is. And I love the fact that this ministry of salvation grandiose, filled with tragedy and re rejoicing, it happens and begins in such a way that we can relate to. A social event where Jesus ends up showing us who he really is.